Hello and welcome to Teacher Rohulas channel. In this video, I'm going to work on the last part of Unit 15 of Cambridge Primary Mathematics Learners Book 5. And this unit is about multiplying and dividing fractions and decimals. This part is aimed to check a student's progress or to check if students have learned the lesson through the unit or not. So in the first part, it says, use any method you like to do these questions. You can draw number lines, diagrams, to help you. So it's up to the students, whatever they use, they can solve these problems. They can either use number lines or maybe they use diagrams to solve this problem. So in order to make it understandable for the students, for question one, which is asking us to calculate, I will use different methods. For the first one, I will use diagram. For the second one, I will use number line. And for the third one, I will use direct multiplying. So the first one is one sixth times five. 1 6 times 5. Let me write it here. 1 6 times 5. So the diagram that I can draw is having 6 parts. 6 parts. Okay. So we have 6 parts here. And this one is 1 6. 1 6. Now when we say 1 6 times 5, it means we have 5 1 6. 5 1 6. It will be 5 6. So 1 6, here it's 2 6, 3 6, 4 6, and 5 6. So 1 6 times 5 is taking this part of the diagram, which is giving us 5 6. Now we can say that 1 6 times 5 is 5 6. Or we can directly multiply. We can write 1 times 5 over 6. 1 times 5 over 6 which is again 5 6. So over here I use two methods. One is the diagram and the other one is multiplying a whole number with the fraction or with the numerator of the fraction. For the second one, I will use number line. So part B is 9 times 1 fourth. 9 times 1 fourth. Let me draw the number line here. So I will divide each whole part into four equal parts. So let's say this is 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So it's 1, 2, 3. We have 9 times 1 fourth. That means between 1 and 0, we have four parts. Between 2 and 1, we have four parts. Between 3 and 2, we have four parts. When we have 9 times 4, means we have 9 1 fourth. 9 1 fourth. This is 1 fourth, 2 fourth, 3 fourth, 4 fourth. We can write 4 fourth or 1. Uh, so again, we can write 1 and 1 fourth. Or we can write 5 fourth, 6 fourth, 7 fourth, 8 fourth. 8 fourth is also 2 because if we divide both 8 sorry, 8 fourth is also equal to 2. If we divide both by 4, it will give us 2. And 9 fourth is here. So we have 9 1 fourths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the answer here is 9 fourth. 9 fourth, which is giving us an improper fraction. Well, Part C is 1 7 times 7. I will directly multiply this one. So I will write 1 times 7, 7. 1 times 7 is 7. And the denominator is also 7, which can be equal to 1. Because 7 7 is equal to 1. Well, we are done with question 1. And for question 2, we have division. We have division. So let me scroll a bit down so that we should have space here and do question two. Part A of question two is one sixth, one sixth divided by three. One sixth divided by three. So to solve this also, I will use diagram. So the diagram is having six equal parts, six equal parts. So three this side and three this side. Now this is showing one sixth. 
This is showing 160. Now, when we divide 160 by 3, it means we divide this 160 into three parts. So this 160 that we have is divided into three parts. So the same other parts are divided into three parts. Divided into three parts, divided into three parts. So all of them are divided into three parts. Now we have 18 equal parts. 18 equal parts. So if we divide 1 sixth into three parts, we will have 1 18th. 1 18th. Because we divide into three parts and one of them is our answer. Out of those three parts that we have divided, one of them which is showing as 1 18th. 1 18th. Or we can simply do this small calculation. We can write 1 sixth divided by 3. So the denominator of 3 is also 1. Any number divided by 1 is the number itself. So in this case, the rule for dividing a fraction by another fraction is we write the first fraction as it is and change the division into multiplication and invert the other fraction. So the inverse of this fraction is 1 third. Now 1 times 1 is 1 and 3 times 6 is 18. So in this case also, we can find 1 18th, 1 18th. So part A of question two is solved. So for part B of question two, I will directly use this method, which I use in version. So I will write as 1 8 times 1 7. You know that the denominator of seven here is one. When we invert, one goes to the numerator and seven becomes the denominator. Now, one times one, one times one is one, and eight times seven is 56. So the answer here is one fifty-six. Means if we divide one eight into seven parts, we will have one fifty-six. Well, now we are working on part C. For part C also, I will use the same method I used uh, for part B. Again, I can write one fifth. The division changes to multiplication and we inverse 6 over 1 and it becomes 1 6. Now again, 1 times 1 is 1 and 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 5 is 30. So the answer here is 1 30. 1 30. Well, we are now moving to question 4. In question 4, it says, Arun is thinking of a unit fraction. Arun is thinking of a unit fraction. He says, when I multiply my fraction by 5, it will be equivalent to 1 half. And when I multiply it by 10, it will be equivalent to 1. So what unit fraction can it be that when we multiply it by 5, it becomes 1 half or it's equivalent to 1 half. And when we multiply it by 10, it becomes 1. So when can 10 be divided by a number that can give us 1? So that fraction is 1 tenth. How? I will show it here. So I will write 4 here. So the fraction can be 1 tenth times 5 to give this one, which is equivalent to 1 half. So 1 tenth times 5 will be equal to 1 times 5 tenth. 1 times 5 is 5, and 10 we have as a denominator. Now it is equivalent to 1 half. How? If we divide both the numerator and the denominator by 5, we will have one half. This means five tenth is equivalent to one half. Okay, this condition is approved. Let's do the other one. One tenth times ten should give us one. Let's do so. So we can write one times ten over ten. One times ten is ten, and the denominator is also ten. So ten over ten or ten tenth is equal to one. Our problem is solved. Here, the first condition is also approved. And the second one is also approved. So it says, what fraction is Aaron thinking of? The fraction he is thinking of is 1 tenth. And this is the proof of that. Well, we have question 5. And question 5 is providing as we agreed and asking us to complete it. So question 5 says, copy and complete this multiplication grid. So we don't have to copy. We can directly work over there. But how can we do it so? I will scroll down so that we should have enough space. So to be able to solve it, I will write it here. Okay, we have agreed where we have to multiply 
a decimal with a whole number. A decimal with a whole number. First of all, I want to show how we can multiply a decimal with a whole number. It can be 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.2, or any other decimal. Suppose we have 0 0.8 times 5. 0 0.8 times 5. So equivalent fraction to 0 0.8 can be 8 tenth. How? When we divide 8 by 10, we will have 0 0.8. And now in place of 0 0.8, we can write 8 tenth. And it can be multiplied by 5. So it's now easy for us. 5 times 8 is 5 times 8 is 40, and 10 is the denominator. Now 40 divided by 10 is 4. This is one of the ways that we can multiply it. Or we can directly multiply. Let me do it here. Let me give a different question. We have 1.2 times 3. 1.2 times 3. I will use the column method of multiplication. I will write 1.2 times 3 in this way. So 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 1 is 3. Now, how many decimal places we have here and our decimal number? We have one decimal place. So we split one decimal place. If we had two decimal places, we would split two decimal places from the right side. These are the two methods that we can solve the given problems there. So for 0 0.5 and 7 and 9 and 4, I will first use the first method that I explained here. I will write 0 0.5 times 7. So we can change this to 5 tenth times 7. So 5 times 7 is 35 and 10 is the denominator. Now we have 35. 35 divided by 10 will be equal to 3.5. So the answer here is 3.5. The same way we can do for 5 times 9. We can write 5 tenth times 9. 9 times 5 is 45. And 45 over 10, so 45 divided by 10 will be equal to 4.5. So the number here is 4.5. And the last one is 4 times 0 0.5. So again, I will write 5 tenth times 4. We know that 4 times 5 is 20. 20 over 10 will be equal to 2. So the number here is 2. Now that we know, we can use this method as well this method that I have solved here. I will directly multiply 0 0.6 with 7, with 9, and with 4. So we consider 0 0.6 as a whole number without considering the decimal. So we just multiply 6 by 7. 6 times 7 is 42. So we can write 42. How many decimal places we have here? We have only one decimal place. So we split one decimal place from the right. The answer is 4.2. The same way, 6 times 9 is 54. So we can write 54, and again, because we have one decimal place, we split one decimal place and put the decimal point there. So it's 5.4, and 0 0.6 times 4 is 2.4. 2.4, how? 6 times 4 is 24, and we have one decimal place, so it is giving us 2.4. The last one is 0 0.2. 0 0.2 should also be multiplied by 7, by 9, and by 4. We know that 2 times 7 is 14. So 14 will give us 1.4. 2 times 9 is 18. It will also give us 1.8. We know that the decimal place here is only one place. Well, 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 4 is 8. Because 8 is a one digit, still we have to split one decimal place from here and give a placeholder 0 over here. So the answer is 0 0.8. 0 0.8. This is all about this part of our lesson, which is about multiplying and dividing fraction and decimal with the whole number and also with other fractions. I hope it helps you learn how to multiply and how to divide decimal and fraction with the whole numbers. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel, like the video and share the video with your friends, your classmates, and also with your students. Have a nice time and thank you so much.